Hello, welcome to this video about DevOps change velocity. Today I'll be covering the DevOps change velocity adoption journey. I'll be covering the path that customers typically take when adopting DevOps change velocity and the value that can be achieved at each maturity step. The steps I'll cover are connecting with third-party tools to import DevOps data, attaching this data to change requests, automatically creating change requests, both with and without pausing your pipeline, and automating change approval using policies. Let's jump in. The first step in the adoption journey is to connect with your DevOps tools and start collecting data. By connecting with the CI-CD tools that your teams are leveraging, you get insight into the data they are producing. This includes planning tools such as JIRA or ServiceNow SPM, coding tools such as GitHub, orchestration tools such as Jenkins, quality scanning tools such as Sonar Cube, and tools that cover the full spectrum such as Azure DevOps. The DevOps Change Velocity application contains APIs that make connecting with and importing data from these tools easy. After importing, all of your DevOps data from all of your different tools is normalized on a single data model within the ServiceNow platform. Additionally, after connecting with tools, data begins to flow into your Insights dashboard, which provides useful metrics such as door metrics, flow metrics, and operational metrics that give insight into how well the adoption of DevOps is going and what benefits you are getting from this adoption. The second step is what we call change traceability. Now that you have data flowing into the dashboard, you can connect this data to your change requests. This gives insight or visibility into the change itself, such as associated work items, test results, or software quality scans. All of this information is typically manually added to the change descriptions, but now we have this information directly on the change request. And if we need additional information, we can click into it to get additional details. The key of this step is while you're collecting data and associating it to a change, you're not altering your existing change process at all. You're, you're simply enhancing your change records with more data. So with these first two steps, we've added visibility into the data connected to your changes without any modification to your existing processes or a heavy lift on setting up these tools. This alone is a huge value to your change teams. Now with step three, we move beyond visibility into automating this process. We'll begin with automating the change registration process. In this step, our change requests are automatically created and the data on them automatically filled out in a consistent manner. The key here is that while change requests are automatically created, they do not stop the pipeline to wait for authorization of these changes. That's why we refer to this step as change receipts. We are not using it to enforce any approval policies or to automate authorization. Instead, we're automatically creating changes and adding receipts for each change. So the change team or auditors have a consistent view of information tied to each change request. Our next step is an interim step before moving on to full change automation. Now in step four, instead of the change request being created and then returning immediately to the pipeline's control to continue, we will now hold this change until it reaches the implementation state. Our change request will remain in the authorized stage and our pipeline will not continue until the change has been manually approved. Once again, we still haven't applied any policies, but now after automatically creating a change, the pipeline stops to wait for manual approval. The final step in this process is to move the full change automation. This is where we leverage the data, not only for visibility and consistency, but also for connecting the policies that have been defined within ServiceNow. This allows for the authorization of the change to happen automatically. Policies are a standard part of ServiceNow's change management application. They take inputs such as code coverage, test results, or security scans to determine if a change should be automatically accepted, rejected, or flagged for manual review. The level at which you automate is completely up to you and the policies that you've created within your organization. This final step is where we found organizations have the most difficulty, particularly when trying to scale. Creating change approval policies is technically not hard to do, but to do so requires collaboration, and often this collaboration is across different teams within your organization. While this step is the largest lift, it also often provides the largest benefit. For many organizations that we've worked with, full change automation has turned a process that typically takes days or even a week to complete to one that takes a few minutes to run through the process. And now you've seen how companies like yours can get started with ServiceNow's DevOps change velocity. While full change automation is the ultimate goal, you can achieve value at each step in the maturity journey. 
To get started, all you need to do is activate the DevOps change velocity application and start connecting your tools. For additional support, please check out the DevOps community page where we have other helpful videos, blogs, and resources.